it is that time of the week again where we will be rebuilding a team in England. And today we are talking about Crystal Palace. Now I'm using a custom database so that I can pick up the season right at the end of the 2021-2022 season. If you want to check out that video, it's this one popping up on screen. Now you can go and install the current editor data files to get the game as realistic, as real time, as humanly possible. I will be picking up the game on the 31st of May on the day after the final day of the 2021-2022 season and seeing if I can do a better job than Patrick Vieira has done. Now he's done a fantastic fantastic job in his first season as Crystal Palace manager. What can I do over the next five years to see where I can take this team? Oh yeah, and just a little thing. We'll be using a strikerless tactic. Let's dive in and take a look at things. So guys, as I mentioned, we are using a custom database so that we can pick things up at the end of the Premier League season. And as you can see, Manchester City have been crowned champions. Burnley, Watford and Norwich have all been relegated. Obviously, Crystal Palace finishing in mid-table, which is a lot better than a lot of teams, a lot of players or a lot of people. Words, Steve. A lot better than a lot of people thought Patrick Vieira would have done at Crystal Palace. But unfortunately for Patrick, I've now ousted him and I am now the man in control of Crystal Palace going into the 2022-2023 season, which I think is going to be quite interesting. Um, my first thing that I will be doing, obviously, because we are in the Premier League, uh, we will be getting a budget very, very soon, which is, looks like it's going to be around 23.76 uh, million as a minimum, which isn't too terrible. Uh, but we will be going strikerless now i've used this strikerless tactic a lot um i have actually done a video on it which you can go and check out on fm scout and on my youtube channel uh, but i felt like crystal palace really did have the players to run it as a striker list the main one that i am kind of worried about is uh edward here who i am currently in the process of going to be retraining him as a shadow striker because i think that's where he can cause a lot of damage uh, he has really high finishing really high composure and stuff like that but i think he can really fit up in this team now obviously we do have conor gallagher in the best 11 right now uh but this is how things would line up if we were to play a game right here right now so it'd be Gita and goal ward anderson uh gay he uh, Mitchell, uh, Kiate, Gallagher, who obviously will be going back on uh, back to Chelsea. Zaha, Elise, Eze, and Schlupp. Now, this guy, I have a lot of faith in. Uh, Michael Elise, obviously coming from Reading. Uh, he is he is French now, capped by the French under-21 uh, in national team, which is great for him. Zaha, always a ever-present in the Crystal Palace team. Um, uh, after his spells at Palace, uh, not at Palace, at Cardiff and obviously the less successful one at Manchester United. But he is getting a little bit older. I don't know if he will still be here for the duration of this five-year rebuild. Um, and then obviously Ebro Eze, who is someone who I am very much interested in getting as much game time as humanly possible. So we're going to jump forward a little bit just until the start of the next season, just to see if I make any transfers, see if I can make this team a little bit better because uh, even though we're running strike list and it will confuse the AI, I need us to be as good as we can be. So let's skip forward until we have a transfer update going into season number one. Right then, guys, we are ready to go into season number one. I only spent a little bit of cash, to be perfectly honest with you. We've let a couple of players go out on free transfers, uh, but I've gone out and I've signed Oscar Mingueza. Now, he can play in two separate positions for this team. He can play as right back. He can play as that centre back. Now, Barcelona massively undervalue this guy in every single save I do, so I was able to pick him up really, really cheap. £4.8 million. He comes over from La Liga, didn't play for Barca last season, and I'm ready to give him some game time here. So if we go into our tactics screen before we head into the season this is how the team is looking so this is my best 11 so Mingueza does come in as that right back obviously um we've got Luca coming in as that anchor and then Will Hughes unfortunately is the guy coming in at that central midfield spot Will Hughes is not Conor Gallagher so we are gonna hope that this forward line of boys can really do the job um, I'm not seeing a lot of game time for Christian Benteke and stuff like that I do still have a little bit of something something to work with but we'll we'll, we'll, we'll see I'd like to think that this team has the firepower to get us into the top half of the Premier League now I will say guys obviously using this update database and the editor files and stuff like that you cannot guarantee which teams are going to come up uh, so unfortunately uh, for you Nottingham Forest fans in this particular instance Luton have been promoted so we are in a Premier League with Bournemouth uh, Fulham and Luton they have been promoted in terms of the season preview uh, we are expected to finish in 16th at a 200 to 1 odds which isn't great um, but we'll, we'll, we'll try and see what we can do 
here um just to just to see how we can get on and stuff like that so which is really really nice I'm, I'm looking forward to it i think we can do really well i think we can exceed those odds that's for sure i um, mean in terms of the competitions that we are in obviously we're in the main three we have the premier league with the emirates FA cup and the Carabao cup all to contend with they want us to finish in the top half of the premier league and they are not concerned about these cup competitions in the slightest if we expand the club um the club vision obviously we need to develop players using the club's youth system play counter-attacking football and sign players under the age of 23 for the first team obviously Mingueza does feature there as a player that fits those bills obviously sign players to sell for a profit and work within the wage budget are kind of ongoings and then towards things they want us to get a little bit better and qualif begin qualification for the Europa League but the first season is just in that top half of the Prem which I think is very much achievable. We will simulate this season with my striker list tactic to see how we get on with Crystal Palace. End of season one. The striker list tactic has done well. I thought this team would be the perfect one to use the striker list tactic for. We have done really, really well. We finished up in sick, then we have qualified for the Europa League already. Some teams, I will say, did have a little bit of a mare. Uh, Manchester United down in seventh, Chelsea in eighth, uh, Tottenham down in twelfth all ridiculous results to be honest but Manchester City did finish top of the league 94 points for Pep and his team uh far and away uh, a ways away from Liverpool who finished 13 points behind them then Arsenal and West Ham rounded out the top four but look at West Ham's form towards the end of the season that is absolutely horrendous they had four losses and a draw the draw was against us uh, and they still somehow managed to finish inside the top four newcastle then ourselves are fifth and sixth respectively and then united qualify for that europa conference league and they now have jose Mourinho as their manager because i assume uh, eric ten Hag got sacked so yep Mourinho's back i suppose um as we go into season number two um uh, fulham brighton and luton were relegated so that does mean that bournemouth were able to survive uh um and and being the only team to survive out of the out of the uh the promoted teams is 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 quite an achievement considering they finished in ninth as well in terms of the, all the competitions though we are not tanking the third round of the fa cup by aston villa not tanking the third round of the carabao cup by tottenham um and in terms of a goal difference and goal scored and all of that good stuff. Oh, Justin Tuchel has been sacked by Chelsea as well. I'm not surprised they did finish in eighth. Ebro Eze is my top goal scorer for the season with 20 goals. Uh, Joachim Anderson is the highest average rated. And that Michael Elise, that guy is back with 50 assists obviously this team is still relatively young as is pretty young from memory uh how old is ebro as he's 24 years of age and obviously michael elise is uh 21 years of age now so these two are going to get better and better together and that's kind of what i'm hoping if we look at our team stats here if i can expand this uh we're one of the you can't see it annoyingly let me see if uh jack can you swing this around so in the team stats uh we are the fourth best in the premier league in terms of scoring goals uh but we are the third worst in terms of keeping the ball out of the back of our net so if we go into the competition you can kind of see in the stages here in terms of goal score we scored 71 goals but we shipped 80 uh 68 goals obviously with uh, a plus goal difference of plus three uh we've got some money to spend next season going into the europa league 73.1 million pounds to spend as palace manager to try and make this team better and i think to be honest i'm going to spend as much of it as i can on this defense i think the attacking forwards uh this front four is really going to be the the driving force for us moving forward obviously they are where the goals are going to come i think i need to reinforce the defense find a few more squad players and see what happens going into our transfer update for season number two this is the favorite bit of everybody's rebuild isn't it going out and spending lots of money because i have definitely gone out and spent a lot of money so the first up the first signing that we want to talk about is melier has come in from leeds we do have a new goalkeeper i'm trying to fit the ethos of signing younger players um and i felt like he was a really good young goalkeeper to take a punt on um he's only 23 years of age not been capped by france yet uh, just yet but i think he is a massive upgrade for us we've also gone out and spent 18 million pounds on patrick berg now obviously this bodo glimpse guy came into the the forefront of everyone's minds initially he's been picked up by lens in game uh, i've got this guy at red star obviously the model citizen personality is brilliant um 
He's just what I'm looking for in this sort of anchor spot to protect the defense. Obviously, he can get around his positioning is good, his teamwork's good, his work rate's good. Really nice high natural fitness. This guy's just going to move around and protect the defense. So I think for the money that we paid at just 18 million pounds, I think that's a good investment. In terms of moving forward, uh, we've also spent some money on Yusuf Demir. Barcelona did not ex exercise their option for Yusuf Demir. So I thought a man who can play in any of those four strikerless positions, I thought was good value. Barcelona didn't exercise their option. He was back at Rapid Vienne. Actually, it looks like he didn't even leave Rapid Vienne in this particular instance. Uh, 12.75 million pounds is what we pay for Yusuf Demir. And that works for me. Big fan of his. Uh, we've also signed this guy who I've never signed before. And I don't know why. He looks fantastic. Davide uh, Fratesi is how I'm going to say this guy's name. Um, Fratesi looks really, really well-rounded. And I can't believe that this is a player I've, one, never really heard of and never really signed myself before. I'm sorry, Sassuolo fans, if uh, if that's that's a big issue for you. But he just looks so well-rounded. And the fact that he's got 14 finishing, he's going to play as a central midfielder on attack for me. So the fact that he can put the ball in the back of the net, really, really good for me. He's good on both feet. Very strong right foot, reasonable left foot. I think he's brilliant. I think I really do think he's brilliant. We've also picked up Josh Xerxes as well. There's another body. Obviously, we are playing four strike four non-striker positions. Uh, so he will be getting retrained as a shadow striker as well. But on a free transfer from Bayern, I thought, why not? Let's have a punt on Josh Xerxes. So we've kind of expanded the team. We've kind of got ourselves a little bit better. And I'm really, really excited about Fratesi. So if we go into the team and quick pick, without restriction, our best 11. This is how we are looking going into season number two. So Melier does come in and go in goal. Um, Ingueza, Anderson, Gage. Um, and then uh, Mitchell, Berg, Fratesi, Eduard, Olise, Eze and Zaha. I love this front four, man. I love this front four. When I started, first of all, I thought we were going to be playing like that. Uh, with Eduard as the uh, shadow striker. But to be honest, the assistant recommends Elise as the shadow striker. They're all relatively well balanced. Fratesi comes in and is pretty much our best player right off the rip from uh, Sassuolo. So obviously, maybe I've not done my research and not knowing who this guy is moving forward. I mean, in terms of all the competitions, we are into the Europa League this year. We will enter in the group stage and the expectation is to get into that knockout stage. Minimum is to reach the fifth round of the FA Cup, fourth round of the Carabao Cup and to finish inside the top half of the Premier League so a team that has qualified for the Europa League last season is now predicted to finish in 12th so we've seen some progression it's reduced the odds of around 100 uh, to 1 which is quite nice so we're still at 250 to 1 though uh, and it's no real surprise Man City are favourites because they do have this guy uh, it's already a pre-arranged one in this database and Erling Haaland is the guy at Man City he's actually been announced the day I'm recording this so um, yeah it's nice, nice to see Haaland in the Premier League for everybody, isn't it? Mm, I'm not so sure. We do have these four competitions, and I'm hoping we can actually have a good showing in the Europa League um, and obviously improve our standing in the Premier League and rebuild and keep building this team up as they get slightly older. And in my opinion, they will get slightly better. So let's simulate Season 2 and see how we get on. So guys, Season 2 is over and in the books, and we have actually improved on our sixth place finish in the Premier League last year. We are now... A Champions League team going into season number three. We kind of have addressed those defensive issues a little bit, those defensive frailties, and we have finished up in fourth in this season. Liverpool beating Manchester City to the title. Chelsea and then ourselves round off the top four. Arsenal, Leicester and Manchester United all qualify for the Europa League. Obviously, it looks like Mourinho has been sacked. Oh my God, what is happening with United here? Yeah, sacked. And they've replaced him with this guy, who I believe, yeah, he is the assistant at Barcelona previously. I believe he was Ronald Koeman's assistant from memory. He comes in. Uh, but it looks like they've gone through United and won the Europa Conference League. Yeah, they've won the Conference League to qualify themselves for the Europa League. Um, but yeah, three teams into the Europa League. Us, we're in the, in the Champions League for next season, which is brilliant. Three teams relegated, Burnley, Norwich and West Bromwich Albion. The yo-yoing continues for a lot of those teams. Uh, but we do finish inside the Champions League spots. 21 victories for us throughout the course of the season. Eight goals, nine, uh, eight, eight draws, nine defeats. 83 goals scored. We are, I think, the third best goal scoring team in the division behind Liverpool and Man City. Uh, but we are still shipping far too many goals. Now, I'm not sure if it's the players. I'm not sure if it's the tactic. But 
Um, I'm, I'm still quite happy with how things are going for Palace. In terms of some of the other competitions, though, we were knocked out in the quarterfinals of the Europa League by Bayern Leverkusen. And we knocked out in the third round of the Emirates FA Cup by Manchester United and the semi-final of the Carabao Cup by West Ham. Um, in terms of our goal scorers and all of that good stuff, uh, Davide Fra uh, Fratesi is our top goal scorer from central midfield with 25 goals. What a debut season this has been for this man. Uh, 17 goals and 12 assists in the Premier League, 25 goals and 15 assists. So 40 goal contributions in 48 games from central midfield. It, it looks like a fantastic return on investment on this 35 million pounds that we did spend on him. Uh, and Alise uh, doing doing his work as well. 17 goals and 24 assists in all competitions for the young Frenchman. I, I wonder if he'll get capped by France at any point in this. He is still currently listed as a four and a half star current potential player. Um, and he is just seemingly going from strength to strength. He has done exceptionally well in all comps uh has has the young frenchman so we will move on we will move on into season number three um in terms of our finances and stuff 45.6 million pounds to go into the champions league with i think this squad's pretty good i'd like to improve us a little bit more in terms of some of our squad depth so for instance on the games when fratesi's not playing uh, that we're not we're not uh, chucking in Will Hughes I'd like a little bit more depth so probably this time around this summer uh, we're going to spend it on depth rather than starting 11 players but we've got some money to spend let's see how we get on going into season number three Going into season number three, this is the first thing I need to talk about. Wilfred Zaha is no longer a Crystal Palace player. Now, the man has played over 400 times for Crystal Palace in this particular save and obviously in real life put together in terms of his career stats. Uh, but he wasn't happy at actually not being like the main guy um, at Palace. So he didn't want to sign a new deal. We tried to sell him and ultimately he is 31 years of age now in this simulation. So he is now a Verona player. Um... So he takes talents to Italy. I, I just don't really know what to say about this, guys. He's gone for 14.75 million. That still feels cheap, but you have to remember he only had a year left on his contract. Um, he's 31 years of age now. He had an okay season last season. Uh, 14 goals and 8 assists in the Prem. Uh, 17 and 11 in all comps. So he actually did pretty darn well in this team. Uh, but he has taken his talents to Italy uh, to see how he gets on. So we have had to replace him with a starting 11 player and we did our business early that's why nobody is showing in this section here we went over to sporting and spent our cash um now i have to say a lot of this is installment still but the first player that we've replaced him with is uh, pedro goncalves now he comes in this man screams shadow striker doesn't he absolute beast um great anticipation great finishing good composure this is the epitome of shadow striker for me he's picked up appearances for the portuguese national team as well now yeah six six appearances for the portuguese national team um and how did he get on in his last couple of years for sporting 12 goals for them last season averaging a 7.47 you can see why i bought him can't you we paid 50 million pounds now obviously some of that is up front some of that is in installments um but i'd like to think that uh sporting would think that is a good bit of business uh, but the the spending in sporting didn't stop there uh, we also went over and signed on Carlo Ignacio now this young center back comes in he has got 35 caps for the Portuguese national team four goals for them as well I have signed this guy in my network save where I'm Real Madrid um, and he can hang at that level so the fact that he was still at sporting uh, he usually gets purchased really darn quickly he was the fact that he was still at sporting was brilliant for me and um, he's left footed as well sometimes that helps people get that balance with their two center backs left foot right foot um, but Ignacio comes in as uh, and becomes a Crystal Palace player uh, two seasons over a seven rating for a center back so we pay 45 million pounds for his services so so sporting have done really well out of us this window almost 100 million pounds combined for two players but ultimately i do think that does make us a better player and a better team i did say that i wanted depth and i've not bought any so fingers crossed we don't have any huge injury problems without restriction this is the best 11 melee mingueza anderson ignacio mitchell berg fratesi eduard eze uh, goncalves and alise now because of signing goncalves goes out onto that left hand side 
And then we're going to have to facilitate some of the gaps with some of our young players as well. Obviously, we do have Demir and stuff like that who can come in and do a job for this team. In terms of the competitions in Season 3, we are a Champions League club, Champions League club at Crystal Palace. Uh, Premier League, they want us to finish inside the top half. They want us to be competitive in the Champions League, but we do enter in the group stage. Uh, quarterfinals of the Emirates FA Cup and quarterfinals at the Carabao Cup as well. So high expectations on the team in terms of the domestic cups, but... Not too bad for the for the Champions League. We can definitely be competitive. In terms of the season preview for the Premier League, though, 150 to 1. Now, we, could, we are really making strides at being one of the better teams in the division. But they still only think that we're just going to creep inside that top half of the table. Obviously, no players in that media dream 11 either um so as things stand guys i think we're I think we're in a good spot going into the champions league the champions league money is going to be vastly helpful for us and let's simulate and see how we get on in that competition because i'd like to at least reach a knockout phase so it is the end of the season season number three of this crystal palace rebuild and things have kind of fallen off a little bit this year that i feel the depth was a real big issue also the fact that we played in the champions league i think is another big problem we did finish in seventh inside the premier league um so we do qualify for the Europa Conference League the following seasons. So that's going to be interesting. Uh, Liverpool, Man City, Chelsea and Arsenal round off the top four. Manchester United, West Ham and then ourselves complete the European places. Brentford, Brighton and Bristol City relegated out of the Prem. Um, so as it stands, we are quite a ways away. Um, we didn't score as many this year as we did before and that seems to be the problem. This season we conceded 53. Last season we conceded 61. So we have tightened up but we're just not scoring as many um, which I don't know if that's a huge problem going into things, but if we expand the competitions tab, you can kind of see how we've got on. Uh, knocked out in the first knockout round of the Champions League by Bayern Munich. Now, I personally don't think this is any uh, any bad bad reason. Like Bayern are one of the best teams in Europe, aren't they? Five goals uh, to two on aggregate. But if we go and have a look at the group stages, I can't remember which group we were in particularly. We were in a group with Real Madrid. Roma and AEK Athens. We pick up three victories here, uh, winning all three of our games at home. We drew two away against AEK and Roma, and then obviously we lost away to Real Madrid. No, uh, no surprises there. But we do go through in second, and obviously, unfortunately, come up against the buzzsaw that is Bayern Munich. We reached the fourth round of the Emirates FA Cup, and we were knocked out by Chelsea, and knocked out in the third round of the Carabao Cup by Liverpool. So I'm not actually thinking in terms of the club vision and stuff like that they're actually too uh frustrated by that um, but obviously we go into the Europa Conference League for next season uh, we do have some cash to spend going into season number four though 58 million 58.4 million so let's go and spend some of that and hopefully we can come back stronger via the Europa Conference League so then guys, I tried to be a little bit more wise with my spending going into season number four and we've kind of added a couple of depth options. So let's talk about them. Obviously, we've had the outgoings there of Wilfred Zaha. We've sold a couple players as well. Oscar Mingueza has gone. He wanted to go to Olympiacos um, because he probably wasn't playing as much as he probably would have wanted to. So we signed him for £4.8 million, turned him into £35 million and he has gone over to Greece. Now, he's been a good servant for us, a relatively consistent performer, but we've gone out and we've tried to replace him uh, by boosting up our transfer budget. So, this first signing is Jeldson, a young Brazilian new gen winger. He comes out of uh, Palmeiras. He is a four and a half star potential player. Um, he had a lot of attributes at a young age, so I thought it was worth. Uh, taking a punt on him 12 million pounds he comes in to the team for we he played a couple last season but um he, he's kind of going to feature a little bit more this time around uh defensive cover though Ezri Konza comes in from Aston Villa uh he was unhappy at Villa so we paid 23 million pounds for his services uh, a regular semi-regular feature in their team uh, in the Premier League last season and the season before. Not averaging a seven, but a young English player I thought was a good enough prospect to take a punt on. He is, he is 27 now, I suppose, in the 2025-2026 season. But it is a good bit of depth that we do have there. We also went out and signed this guy from Besiktas, uh, Valentin Rosier. Now, this is the guy who's going to play right back for us now. Obviously, Mingueza has uh, departed. A little bit more of a traditional fullback, I guess. Higher dribbling and crossing and stuff like that and not as defensively sound. Can only play as a right back can play as a centre-back, that sort of thing. Uh, gets forward whenever possible, so I think he can add a little bit more to us on that right-hand side, a little bit more of an offensive option. 
and we've we managed to bring him back guys if you're a palace fan we brought connor gallagher back to the club uh he after the loan spell went back to chelsea and barely played so he was transfer listed by chelsea so we went out and paid the money for him 22 million pounds we paid to chelsea for him he only played 11 times in the premier league last season for the season before and 16 at returning after the loan it's just not good enough for a player of connor gallagher's talents so he comes back into the team to add another sort of bow a string to the bow in that central midfield attack um so in terms of the team this is our best 11 now we we do have a little bit more in terms of squad depth which i'm actually a little bit happy with but we are running on a really tight squad here as you can see elise is wanted by milan and pedro goncalves is wanted by leeds he's, he's never going to leeds uh, so this is the team melier rosier uh, gaze batch uh, gaze is back in the team um you know obviously Konza's injured and stuff like that we do have some good defensive options now ignacio mitchell berg uh, fratesi does beat out conor gallagher in this particular instance and um, then we've got eduard yusuf demir goncalves and alise obviously we do have the defensive options of uh we, the options of eze anderson and stuff like that conor gallagher on the bench i think i need a backup goalkeeper so maybe we dive into our youth setup and bring ourselves a goalkeeper up just in case melier gets injured maybe going into this season number four now, obviously, we are in the Premier League, FA Cup and Carabao Cup. But this year, the European competition is the Europa Conference League. The board actually want me to get to the final of the Europa Conference League, which I can kind of understand considering the budgets of some of the other teams that are in here. But we do have to qualify. We are in the fourth qualifying round against Augsburg out of Germany. Uh, so that's going to be an interesting one because there are definitely teams in here that I would have probably preferred to have come up against versus uh, a team from the Bundesliga. So... We'll see how we get on there. In terms of the Premier League, though, in terms of the season preview, uh, down to 50 to 1 now. So the odds are getting better season on season. The bookies are kind of backing us just that little bit more as we move forward. Uh, but they still expect us to finish 10th. So um, we're going to try and have to see what we can do here. I've just noticed Jude Bellingham is now a Liverpool player in this particular save. And Joshua Kimmich is now a Manchester city player again that is a problem for the rest of the league isn't it um so we're going to simulate a season four and see how we get on imagine if we win a europa conference league title that'd be cool what a season season number four was in terms of the premier league we finished miles behind the team that won it but we were the best of the rest we did finish in second behind liverpool who absolutely blitz the competition they actually went the whole season unbeaten i will talk about that in just a split second if we expand the premier league uh, we can take a look at that but um we also won the europa conference league obviously it was predicted and i expected that we got to the final we did get to the final and we did win that one i'll talk about the run on that uh on the way in just a few seconds uh we did finish in the fifth round uh knocked out in the fifth round of the emirates fa cup by spurs uh knocked out in the fourth round of the fa cup uh carabao cup sorry by liverpool um ultimately i think this is an, an incredible season for palace fans finishing second in the prem yeah okay they're a mile they're like 21 points behind liverpool but when a team goes unbeaten in the prem you kind of see this don't you a team goes unbeaten in the prem you're not beating them are you um so let's talk about the premier league first and foremost we do finish in second as i mentioned 21 points behind liverpool uh, they had 10 draws throughout the course of the season all the way from home uh, and then they won everything else they absolutely blitzed everybody only conceded 22 goals the whole season and we finish in second so we are back into the champions league for our fifth and final season chelsea and manchester city uh round off the top four arsenal southampton and leeds are the rest of the european places and it looks like west ham have won the europa league because they are also into the champions league uh manchester united down in 14th what on earth they've got antonio conte as their manager now what on earth what on earth what on earth stuart pierce is the assistant manager in the caretaker capacity valverde has been there and has been sacked and now they've got antonio conte it looks like manchester united still have not been able to get this club um, back on track burnley fulham and blackburn rovers are the teams relegated out of the premier league and blackburn finishing with only 13 points in court in the course of the season they only won two games which is not good for blackburn rovers um in terms of the europa conference league then let's go into our schedule and we can take a look at things here 
will probably be a little bit easier for you guys to see our run through. So we did have Olsberg in that qualifying thing. We did go through and we take on AAB, AIK and Dnipro uh, in our group stage. Obviously, we win all of those games and we go through into the knockouts. We go into the second knockout round uh, through top in our group. So Braga, we then come up against. We beat them 5-2 on aggregate. Then we take on Stuttgart, another team out of Germany, but obviously not one of the elite tier teams. They are in the Conference League after all. Uh, and we beat them 3-2 in both games to go through there. Then we take on AEK Athens, uh, beat them 3-0 away and then 6-2 at home. And then we go and take on um, Udinese in that final and we get the goals uh, three in the second half. Uh, to go through and win that trophy. Josh Xerxes, Yusuf Demir and Nathan Ferguson are the guys to get to the goals. And I'm going to show you them here because it's not every day that you win a European trophy, especially if you're someone like Crystal Palace. Uh, so let's go through and take a look at this team and you can kind of see how the strikerless tactic works against the AI. So first and foremost, we have a corner to the far post and Josh Xerxes is there. He's lurking in and around that far post and gets in and scores. The second goal is worked out to this left-hand side. Mitchell driving forward, a little tip over the top, and Yusuf Demir is there to gamble on that half space between the last centre-back and the goalkeeper, and he gets in and slots it away. And we score another set piece here, guys, all the way to the far post, and Ferguson is there to head that one in. Set pieces, guys, are absolutely massive they do really really help us um so we win the europa conference league so we will be we would have guaranteed ourselves champions league uh europa league sorry football for next season but we did finish second in the league so we go into the champions league which is quite nice um, in terms of the Prem, very, very happy. All in all, uh, Pedro Goncalves for, uh, for a very good season there for him for 21 goals in that central attack and midfield spot. Inacio, the highest average rating. So it looks like I've been justified by spending all that money on those two guys from Sporting. And Alise is really starting to come alive now. Um, four caps and two goals for the French national side at full senior level. And attribute-wise, he looks absolutely ridiculous now. Yeah, okay, I'd like to work on his bravery just a touch, but it doesn't really really matter like he's good on both feet really high dribbling really high corner attribute as well good passing good penalty taking good technique and as you can see down the bottom of your screen nine goals and 27 assists for the young frenchman who just seems to be getting better and better and is a mainstay in our team they're saying he's, he doesn't enjoy it. dreads playing in big matches got two assists um in that in that europa conference league final so who knows? Maybe they're not important, those things. And anyway, um, so we go into our fifth and final season back in the Champions League after finishing second in the Prem with Crystal Palace and this strikerless tactic. Season five coming up and we've got... Oh, that's not a lot. This is where the installments catch up with me, isn't it? We've got just under 30 million to spend. Let's see what we can do with it. So guys, you know how it works around here now. If you are still here for the fifth and final season, I ask you guys to comment something down in that comment section to let me know that you are still here. And today we are going to comment, we love you Palace. Now, I think Palace have done really, really well so far. And we go into this fifth and final season and I'm hoping maybe we could sneak a Premier League title. I don't know if that's a little bit too, too strange to ask for, finishing 21 points behind the league leaders last season, but... It, stranger things have happened going into the transfer update then for this fifth and final season there's a couple of youngsters that i did sign and did pick up pretty darn uh, early in this campaign going into the 2026 2027 season so the first one is nahul Roca. is how i'm gonna say this guy's name young argentine uh, uh defender up to a four and a half star potential. I know you guys like me bringing in the new gen talent so that if you pick up this save, you can have them at your disposal. Andre Ricardo comes in from Santos. Again, another sort of well-rounded young 20 he's only 20 years of age a uh, young brazilian but we've brought him in and sent him straight out on loan to hull city because he's not premier league ready just yet we also signed this guy danny nobre comes in from benfica spending in portugal not over just yet look at the physicals on this winger he's also a model citizen in terms of his personality fits the tactic that we are trying to run really really nicely and i think those physicals can cause any teams some problems also capped at under 21 level for just being 18 years of age he is in the first team already he is wanted by stoke on loan you will not be going uh, we've also signed this guy young mexican 
uh, and only 18 years of age and he's got eight full caps for Mexico already. Uh, Jesus Ernesto Jimenez is how I'm going to say this guy's name. He can play central midfield, but I bought him to be a central defender. I'm really happy with how he looks, especially mentally for someone so young. Physically also very good. He's six foot four. He's going to win the ball in the air. I think he will stay in our first team. Uh, I'm not really fully sure how many games he's going to play. Oh, no, he's not. I've loaned him back out. Okay, I thought he may stick around, but I've loaned him back out to uh, Pachua in Mexico. We've also signed another Mexican here. Uh, either Ether, Ether Hernandez, um, another sort of, you can kind of see the, the attributes that I'm looking for, guys. The nice, well-rounded mentals, the nice, well-rounded physicals, and hoping that the technicals can improve. This guy's got 16 passing and 17 technique right off the rip. He's 19 years of age. He's not been capped by Mexico, but I don't think that will happen for long. He can play at central attacking midfield, can play at central midfield, but look at this teamwork, vision, and work rate on this guy. For a creative force in the midfield, I think that's pretty good. We spent 7.5 million pounds on him. And then we signed ourselves a backup goalkeeper. Andrea Burton comes in. Young player uh, from Napoli for £7.5 million, I believe it was. Uh, it seems well-rounded enough, but he is a young, young goalkeeper and I needed a backup. So a two-star goalkeeper works just well for me with the potential of having a higher upside. Um, so in terms of the tactic and the team going into this final season this with a quick pick on our best 11 this is how we are looking melier uh rosier uh gage uh inacio um uh, tyreek mitchell is there as the fullback berg fratesi edward uh yusuf demir goncalves elise we did manage to keep off all the attention for elise and goncalves obviously we are going into the champions league our squad looks much deeper now look at the players we do have on the bench in anderson Connor gallagher uh ezri konza ebri eze we're a problem now uh, we're a really nicely built problem um for other teams i've been working on some of these overseas affiliates as well we now do have an overseas affiliate in the j league we have one in china we also have one in australia you guys know i'm banging on about this all the time about getting these overseas affiliates to help with that existing um uh merchandising revenue so we are spreading the name of crystal palace into japan china and australia to grow that pool of cash um in terms of the competition so we are in the champions league again so premier league champions league fa cup and carabao cup i'd love a domestic cup as well i do i know i said it sarcastically at the start imagine if we could win a premier league with crystal palace that'd be brilliant wouldn't it I'd settle for a domestic uh, domestic trophy. In terms of the season preview for the Premier League, though, we are up into seventh now, 33-1 to one to win that Premier League title despite finishing second last year. Uh, they're not putting enough respect on our name. Um, but Harry Kane, oh my God, Harry Kane is now at Manchester City playing up front uh, uh, alongside, uh, alongside Erling Haaland. 39.5 million for Harry Kane. He's 33, but he's still going to bag so many goals, isn't he? Fair play. Why not? Why not, Man City? Um, so we'll simulate the season, this fifth and final season, and see how we get on. So, guys, we're going to finish on the competition screen for season number five. Now, the Premier League was a step beyond. Unfortunately, we didn't win any domestic cups either, but we did have one hell of a run in the Champions League, which we'll talk about in a second. We finished in seventh in the Premier League, which I think is still up there with some of the big boys in the Prem. Liverpool, Arsenal, Man City, and Manchester United round out that top four. Southampton and Chelsea qualify for the Europa League, but we do have a European competition to gun for next season in that Conference League, which we have already won once this time around knocked out in the quarterfinals of the fa cup by manchester united knocked out in the third round of the carabao cup by man city it seemed like the cups weren't to be we just always seem to come up against the bigger clubs early uh, rather than in, in in any of these finals and stuff like that the champions league though we did make it all the way to the semi-finals of the champions league this year so if we take out all the competitions and just put the champions league back in this was our champions league run all the way to the semi-final palace fans you'll have to let me know down in the comments if you'd be happy with this sort of a season i assume you would be a run to the quarter uh, the semi-finals of the champions league sorry we were in a group with psv roma and young boys at eight one victory against young boys as well uh really really making a mark on the champions league we then go through into the knockout stages we are in the first knockout round we then take on Bayern leverkusen in that first knockout round we beat them 2-1 in both those games which is quite nice we then take on ac milan now we lose 2-0 away at the san silo uh but then we beat them 6-1 back at selhurst park which is absolutely ludicrous stuff um 
including some late late goals it would it would appear uh then we have psg we draw the game at Selhurst Park 1-1 but the game was too far for us um, away at the Parc de France uh, where we lost 3-0 uh, Gio Reyna and Matthias De Ligt with the goals for uh, PSG in that Champions League semi-final so season number five okay probably wasn't as big a, su a success as we probably would have liked our highest average rating being our goalkeeper uh, we were the first best into a uh, fourth best in terms of goal scored eighth best in terms of goals conceded in the premier league i just think that run into the champions league semi-final really hampered us towards the end of the season because if we go back here and pop all of our competitions into the fixture list it seems like the deeper we went in yeah the deeper we went into the champions league um the more we seem to struggle it seemed like a lot of the games after the games get uh, in the champions league uh, we kind of did go on and and not do as well or the games before the premier uh, the the champions league games we didn't do as well so who knows maybe it did hinder our progress maybe i didn't build a deep enough squad to handle all the competitions in this high intensity formation that is my striker list tactic if you enjoyed it guys please do let me know down below in that comment section drop a like on the video and if you like the rebuilds there is a playlist popping up here right now for you to check out all of the rebuilds that we've done in the fm22 game site